when you make 100k for some odd reason you think making a million is the next step but let me tell you something if i could teach you've got 100k you've got 200 300 400 500 600 700 800 900 before you get to a million which you know that painful time that's when i switched and turned into a man and was just fed up with my life and fed up with my situation you are where you are from the choices you've made but you can go to where you want to go with the choices you make you just well, broke some people's whole day bro by saying that because i've never discussed that on the podcast so i don't think okay. a lot of people know that what's up traders welcome to the day trading show my name is austin silver i'm your host i really appreciate you being here today i sit down for a one-on-one -on -one episode with my special guest. Dan is from the UK. He's a day trader. He's an investor. He's got a couple of different businesses. He's a world traveler. He's a father. He's a great guest. I really enjoyed this conversation and I think you guys are going to love it. So make sure you're focused. Make sure you're subscribed here to the channel so you don't miss any of the future episodes. And now enjoy my conversation with Dan. What's up traders, Austin from the future here. I want to pause just to say thank you to my funded FX. If you want to support me and our channel and our podcast and all the content that we create, please consider using the link down in the description when you purchase your next funding challenge. My funded FX runs discounts all the time. It's probably posted on my Twitter or maybe Matt's Twitter, the guy that runs the company. Search Twitter for that discount code. I get credit, we get credit if you just use the link. So use any discount code you can find, but if you want to support the channel, use the link down in the description. We appreciate it. Can't thank you guys enough. Now enjoy the video. What's up, traders? Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we sit down with a very special guest. Dan is from the UK, originally from Hong Kong, but you were born and raised in the UK, correct, Dan? Yeah, yeah. Family's from Hong Kong, yeah, but Beautiful. born and raised and in the UK. speak both languages, so he's bilingual. Do you speak any other languages? I speak Japanese, uh, Cantonese, Mandarin, and English, yeah. Bro, already <laughs> it's 10 seconds into the podcast and you're telling everybody how much smarter you are than all of the rest of us, but it's okay. I really appreciate you being here, Dan. Appreciate it's going to be, you. we've been chatting for a few minutes before the podcast. It's uh, been a good, good, refreshing conversation before that. So I think this is going to be a great podcast for the, uh, for the listeners. Now you kind of know me through Twitter and social media, um, but my audience may be a little bit newer to you. So before we get into all the fun stuff, Give me a 30,000 foot overview of who Dan is and what Dan does in the trading space. Right. It's always a hard one, isn't it? It's always a hard one. I know, one to I know. Come on, I start off hard, bro. I start off hard. Yeah, it's one of those things. I think the biggest thing I can start off with right now is I'm the man that I wanted to become when I was 18. And that's the, probably the biggest thing I Great want to start answer. off with. Yeah, Great because answer. my message this year too, and I think you know, getting some recognition to some degree on, on social media. And my main message is, is always you versus you and me versus me. So um, I grew up in the UK. I was born and bred here. My mom was a single mom. She worked three jobs just to make things happen. Um, you know, everyone has their trials and tribulations. And I had many, many, many of them. And I think the main two pinnacle ones, which I always bring up because these are the ones that kind of changed me. And it was when I first broke up with your first love, as you always do, right? Your first love breaks you. But on always. the same on the same path of that, my uncle had passed away at the same time. Then my mom had to fly back for the funeral and couldn't we couldn't afford a ticket for me to go back. Um and I had to spend Christmas with myself. And then that was the biggest pinnacle moment that changed me to become How old were you? A man. I was like an 18, 19. Yeah, so we went in deep, like just to start off. Right we there, deep. right there. Yeah, good, good. But right, it tells right, us who you are a little bit. You know what I mean? Right in the gut. Yeah, but it's, yeah, bro, right but like you just said a second ago, bro, that is what has built you to this point, you know? Correct. Yeah. And the reason I wanted to start off with that is because, like I said, from that period of time, I was a very skinny dude. I had no motivation. I never appreciated materialistic things. I never appreciated money. I never had that drive. And I just, I was just in such a dark and painful place. That, that's when I said, you know what, enough is enough. So I turned to the gym. And then from there, um, obviously at the moment, I've got a real estate business, investment business, part of Coin Bureau Trading as a partner. Uh, we've working with my funded FX, 600K funded, which to be fair, I generally think is probably more than enough for me for the time being. Um, and then other things as well. Husband, dad is the most important one. <laughs> the most important one. I love that. How long have you been funded? And before that, were you trading personal capital? Like, are you it, been in the funded game? Are you new to the funded game? When did that start? Yeah. So I think this is probably the first time I've kind of really been speaking about it. I've got, so I was trading for quite a while now. Um, it took me four years to even get profitable. I wanted to about the same for me, bro. Yeah, yeah. About the same for like, me. Apparently these days people get 
profitable in a month and then flip oh yeah bro if you don't flip your account in the first month you're a loser actually right apparently five percent gains is terrible well you tell that to the hedge funds and investment bankers and people who manage billions of dollars but we'll talk about that in more detail but in terms of trading um i was on personal and then that's where i kind of made my first pot of gold uh it was personal trading and i have a well i had a conservative like 100k personal account and trading it but i kind of had a ceiling and one of the funny lessons which I may share is when you make 100K, for some odd reason, you think making a million is the next step. But let me tell you something if I could teach. You've got 100K, you've got 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900 before you get to a million. But look, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people can resonate with me when I say you go from 100, you try to go to a million. And that's my problem. Like I was doing 100, 200, I think 400 was probably the best year um it, it, accumulatively not not just trading and I was like where's my million where's my million and this is where I kind of had to take a step back and this is where funded really started to grow and I was like well you know 100k locked up in an exchange that's my own money and if you look at funded trading you could put 5k and get a million funded and you get 100k and the reason why I say that for the people who can't catch on is normally you get a 10% drawdown so therefore if you get a 100k account uh, 10k is actually the amount you can trade with but the idea, quote unquote, is that if you're, uh, you know, a consistent trader, the main matter of fact is your drawdown shouldn't break that period anyway. Correct. But yeah. um, my point is that at that time, my thinking was, you know, if you know a million that costs you 5K to get it, that's 100K anyway. So and that's not my capital and it's risk free. And the return of investment is insane. If you think about it, if you pay 5K for a million and you make 10K, you've doubled your money already, which is very very easy you can make 100k on on, on i mean on there's million, right? very few other businesses like that bro right now i mean it is a, an amazing time to be working with these funding companies no matter what company it is with of course like there's so many options now but like mm-hmm. you said the the scalability the low risk Absolutely. everything is risk reward you know what i mean everything is risk reward so like you just said if you're going to put in five grand and make one percent make 10 grand right there you doubled your money on a one percent return mm-hmm. and you yeah. get your five grand back you get your five grand back. So you actually make 15, te- like you make 10, you get your five back. So you're not in drink. Yeah, which is insane. So if you want to look at that as a 10,000% return or a hundred percent return, depending on how you want to look at it. So sure. if you have the skill set, anything kind of works. So um, I took going from there, um, that's obviously the mindset I had. And then last year was the best. It was the worst year, but the best year. And there's a saying that someone said to me, and I'm going to quote unquote and say it, say it back to you guys, is the worst thing is normally the best thing that happens to you. Like I said at the start of this was, you know, that painful time. That's when I switched and turned into a man and was just fed up with my life and fed up with my situation. You are where you are from the choices you've made, but you can go to where you want to go with the choices you make. So last year was just losing money. I decided to tr- pursue funded and trading funded is completely different from trading live and then let me add to that trading live funded is completely different to challenges and that is not emphasized enough people are like yeah you do 10 percent, you do 10 percent, you just keep risking one percent on live you just keep doing dynamic risk it doesn't work like that there is a lot more mental game there's a lot more consistency um but either way that humbled me last year and i think that humbleness was really good because uh, like I said, it's, it, it really, the worst things are the best things. So I was just losing money. I didn't have my trading income because I stopped trading my personal account, right? I was figuring out funded. Crypto was in the bin. My real estate business wasn't doing so well, but the best thing was I had my health and I had my son, so we're still doing good. And now reviewing that year, to be able to be in that position to lose that much money, to not have an income for a year and still survive and still live good and still travel the world. Um, and like I said to you before we did this podcast, my son, it took me 29 years to buy a business class, but it took my son eight months to go to Dubai, Philippines, Hong Kong, Boracay. For <laughs> as a, a prince, a bro, as a good prince <laughs> should. Come on. It's, it's all right for some, isn't it? <laughs> but yep. you're, I'm but sure you know what, your bro, son won't the same. Of course, bro. I mean, like, what is the point of having the excess if not to spend it on the people that you love? Like you could be the guy that buys 25 cars. I will never be that guy. I would rather take my entire friends and family on a sick 25 day vacation rather than buy 25 cars, you know? So that is, that is where the money should be spent, bro. 
You want to make money trading, we can help you do that. Click the link, take the three-day free trial to ASFX TV, and come live stream with our team of funded, full-time, professional traders all week long. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So it's experiences and things like that. So you'll never get that back. And that was um, a really fulfilling, a really, 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 really fulfilling moment. But anyway, um, so going from there and then this year, we've been funded secures and I rotate the accounts and yeah, done uh, just being doing consistent. Mostly really Forex? Really Is that yeah, mostly well, trading Forex? It says, it's, uh, we say Forex trading, but it's DAX and gold. So it's future, ah. or futures or indices yeah. and commodities. Sure. Yeah, DAX and gold are the only ones I trade, yeah. Really? Okay, so you're I the first move. person I... I've had on the podcast that is just DAX and gold. So let's go really quick. DAX is at all-time highs, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, if you look at the fundamentals, that was always going to be the case anyway. And also the same with footsies. When after pre-COVID, after every single drop, um, if you look at the S&P, if you look at the basic fundamentals of investing, if you read Ray Dalio or Warren Buffett- They go up. Definitely, yeah, you're definitely a guy that does. So yeah. they always come back to this, which is why- as an investor, not a trader, you can never, ever outperform in the long run of the indices. But that's a different story from trading them. But yeah, they're at all-time highs at the moment. So I didn't get any long positions. We're just waiting. It's just really, really hard to get those trades. <laughs> it is really hard. Definitely, especially just knowing where we're at with macro climate. Do you pay attention to like interest rates coming out of the States as an investor and a trader in the UK? Do you follow the Fed and everything there? <laughs> Uh, to a degree, um, whether okay. you like it or not, even though, you know, we have a banter between the UK and the US, US is the number one in the economy. And obviously, US is the number one in terms of traded fiat currency for the time being before the Roman B takes over, which already did for one day. But yeah, I take, I take note of them, but I try not to get too much into macro, um, too much into politics and too much into macro, because too much of anything can really be bad for you. And also too much of, especially news and fundamentals can cloud your judgment. And that's an experience I had. Yeah, because when, so when you get so fixated on a fundamental where you're right, right, which was, um, I might as well go into this, this story of Brexit. I was, this was the, probably the best and the worst trade for me because I knew Brexit was going to have a negative impact. Um, I say new, but I had an analysis. I put together a report and a thesis and an idea of Brexit, right? So, you know, if we do have Brexit, what was the outcome? Well, we have to do new trades. Even it goes all the way down to the details of pillows. Pillows have their own regulations. So the fact that we're no longer part of the EU, we have to make our own regulations. Pets, food, import, export, um, trading, currencies. It's an unlimited list of uncertainty. And what does uncertainty create? Fear. Crypto anything in life when there's fear that's a sell-off so i was very very confident for a sell-off and that happened but the problem was when you're trading and you're leverage trading is position size right so that ended up taking my position out and then absolutely plummet in another thousand pips and then yeah i missed out on a lot of money but i think so that what is the lesson thing. from that long term what do you learn from that like because it's clearly stuck with you so we all and all yeah. of us everybody listening has those experiences you whether it was yeah. brexit or a cpi day whatever it was those certain days stick with you what is the big lesson from that one um it's actually three so the first right. one is so what so what it's like i would have made that money so what probably would have just spanked it because I was young anyway and I used to buy a load of materialistic things and that's to some degree I still do now but it's a balance um because you don't just spend every 100% of it it's just whatever's left over then you spend it so it'll be so what that's the first one so like you make the money so what second one is the trade the fact is I didn't read trading for not financial freedom uh that book before then and fallacy mm. is one of the biggest things. So fallacy is the biggest thing when it comes to trading. And actually, if this is like, I probably would say this is probably the biggest thing in trading overall, is that every time you take a trade, the probability is reset. It's the same thing as fallacy where they use it for a coin flip. If you flip a coin, heads is done heads 100 times in a row. The hundred and like one time that they flip it is doesn't mean it's going to be tails. It's still 50-50. Meaning yeah. that the same thing with your trade is it's fallacy. You have a very high opportunity to win, but you could also lose. So don't have any attachment to that. And if you lose and it moves, fine. You've got tomorrow. You've got next year. You've got the rest of your life to trade slowly and steadily. And then third and final is don't be too stuck on your idea. That one idea can rip you because you're so either stubborn. And even if you're right, same thing going with a mix of the first one. So what? You're right. It's, 
just move on like you've got more opportunities tomorrow it's going to cost you your sanity it's going to cost you your money and it's also going to be a painful lesson you could potentially avoid hence why i'm here telling you this lesson <laughs> and especially with crypto when you're whenever you're trying to like in that situation call a top on crypto you can still smoke you with leverage or no leverage crypto is a violent market in a way where it can yeah. Trying to call tops and bottoms. I've had a couple of guys on here that are short sellers. I've had a guys, a couple of guys that do options and mainly short. They sure. have had some of the most painful situations when it comes to trading, like the most yeah. painful stories through getting yeah, yeah. smoked, through being short and short for a month, and then they get taken out of it, and then it drops. Like you said, like a lot of painful stories on the short. So I'm curious now: Do you still look for opportunities like that, or are you more no, conservative? Never. Okay, I think it was. Um... It's not really conservative because if if you guys, I don't know what your opinion is. Uh, we actually just to bounce back. It would be good to hear your opinion on this as well. I think the most amount of money you can make good amount of money no matter what. But I still think that macroeconomics and swing trading is where the most amount of money is made because when you go with a trend, prime example, I know a trader who traded gold from thirteen hundred all the way to uh, to to two thousand, and that was a hundred k into one point six million. Then someone wow. who bought, yeah, who someone who bought nickel for the war. So obviously the war, right? You need nickel for tanks and bullets and stuff. So click straight. Nickel's away, up strong nickel. this year. Yeah, yeah, and he made what like twenty thousand percent on 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 that on that trade. It's funny so, you brought that up. I just looked at nickel for the first time yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's interesting how 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 things. But I do agree with you. The life. macro, the swing traders, they are where the big money is because you can not only hold the position longer, and if you're in a market like you said that typically trends higher, like an indice, you can add into that position. You can raise stops. Let's say you're up 20 grand in a position. If you get a re-entry signal, you risk another five, you could still get stopped out on both of them and still be profitable. So those guys can layer themselves into that trend and just take advantage. I mean, that's Tom Basso. Tom was just on the show. Like I mentioned to you, I've sat with Tom. He managed 300 million. He was managing 15 million part-time before he even like really blew it up. And all he did is trend following. He is a trend following trader. And that's and, and and the thing is with those is you're always you're hedged, you're scaled, and you make the most amount of money. And also the biggest thing is when right now we're going above funded. Like this is we're talking institution people with big big money. And when we say big money, they're talking like hundreds of M's to B's, hundreds even millions, more than yeah. B's. Yeah. And to fill orders, like just to understand to fill even types of orders like that is very difficult. So you're not oh even going to be able to day trade. How can you day no. trade a million lots? No, no, no. You ha I mean? Those guys have to get in in pieces because mm. uh, like we've seen mm. billions, bro. You don't want to spook the market on the way in, right? You don't want to let them know your idea. So there's, they do a lot of different things in different markets to hide the positions yeah. that they're building. I've yet to watch that show. I heard it's so good, but- Oh my is, God, uh, bro. You haven't watched Billions? I know. I, I know, but I- I've been I'll tell you the, the first couple of seasons are so much better than the back half as in any show. You know what I mean? They just play it out too long. They should have had every- it's HBO. Yeah, it's great, bro. It's it's amazing. And it's so applicable to like, especially I'm sure the experiences you've had with Coin Bureau and like being in an office of finance people, bro, they just like talk shit to each other and they like currently, you know what I mean? They're boys and then they're fighting. Like it's just the camaraderie, bro. It's it's such yeah. a great show. You would love it, bro. Yeah, love yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I definitely probably would want to watch uh, Billions. It's been on the list, but I haven't watched TV in a long time. When I do, I watch no, it. That's my TV's life. tough to get to, bro. Definitely. Yeah. With can we can we circle back just for a second? Because I think the listeners, at least and, and me too, I'm curious. You mentioned already, and a lot of like you saw today, we had the episode with Kyle go up. We talked to a lot of guys that are funded. I'm funded. This is really a popular thing. Talk to me a little bit about what you were said, the difference between challenge and funded. Let's put live capital to the side because a lot of the guys I'm sure are listening are building live capital. They are in the process of taking funded payouts to build live capital. So let's True. talk to me because I made comments in the show and we can talk about my opinions on the challenge versus the funded, but I would like to hear from you too. What kind of perspective are you asking? Are you asking the position the sizing, of... aggressiveness okay. versus being conservative, time frame challenges versus not time frame? Which ones do you prefer? That kind of thing. Like you, you made it pretty clear you have a different approach to a challenge than when you are funded, and you have a different approach when you are trading your capital versus when you're funded. So, what does that look like? Is that aggressiveness? Like, how does that play out? Okay, so I would say you always got to look at the the time in your life um, because. I don't just trade, obviously, and my time is valuable in my own sense, and everyone has their their answer to that. But I think the reason I start off with that is because you need to see where you are currently in your current financial situation in order to look at these challenges, right? Now, if you've never 
took a trade or like you're still trying to get into it you need to trade that challenge like it is everything like absolutely everything so you have to have hard fought mechanical rules and that's when i actually ended up changing my funded process so when i first started it i was kind of like whatever had this ego i was you mean not a lot of people and still right not a lot of people cover their own 100k capital would be trade that consistently for three four years and right. get a, a living from that and ego is somewhat deserved at that point a little bit that's what got you there so you got to give yourself a little credit right you don't want to have no ego yeah Yes and no, um, because at the end of the day, with trading, we should have none of that because it should be remote. But I, yeah, I mean, I appreciate the love from you because you're absolutely right from that side because I did that. I was able to get to that position. However, that was the detriment to fund it because funded, I was like, what's $500? Let's just like, just YOLO this. And then I did YOLO it and I did pass it and then, you know, got live, but it was just inconsistent. And the even if I was profitable, because, you know, the thing is, it costs you $500. Say I do five challenges. There's 2,500. I get a 10K withdrawal. I'm still seven and a half up. Okay. And even on one of the interviews with the funded trader, even Angelo said, um, you know, unfortunately, he hates to say it. They're the people who actually get paid the most because they're just YOLOing and they get massive payouts. You, you do 100K worth of payouts and you've only spent 20K. You're still 80K up. But... But, but funded companies and prop firms are still early and in the future, they're not going to be around forever and we don't know. And if you don't, if you lack the skill, then you lose an income. And also it wasn't good for my like, mental health. It wasn't good for just trading. It was, I was not following a plan. I wasn't disciplined. And when you don't so you're, you're plan, speaking you're, specifically about the YOLO. Yeah. The YOLO bit for me when I first yes. started that challenge. Okay. So when I started okay. doing that, I just had no ego. I was just kind of like YOLO. I was just like, yep. I did yep. one trade. I'd full send that one trade and try to yep. pass the challenge. And Everybody got yeah. interested in this on my pod, like my listeners after they heard Omar talk about this. Cause Omar was like one of the first guys I had on the podcast talking about like, yo, if I spend five grand on funding challenges, but I make 50, who's making money? Me? Yep. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that's I, the mindset I, I, of a lot of people. I, I get that, but I think long maturity term of, yeah so the maturity yes. of me as a trader and maturity as me as an investor and a business person and everything is that yes so going back to my lesson right so what you're going to hear that again so what if i'm 40k up i'd rather make half that money consistently less stress and with a methodical approach and what i've been doing year on year out but with consistent gaze and taking it up to seven figure goals because I, I like my main goal is i want to have at least a million in one year net profits from just trading and that, that now can be just from from payouts really and truly which i want to leverage so um yeah once once i kind of so going back to that so i yolo there and then you know enough is enough and that goes back to the same stories like you change um either through enough pain you change when you're fed up or you change when you're excited and i was just fed up i was like this is not working i'm being stupid here um i've 300k like just I'm, i know i'm net up but this is just not the way to do it so then i reevaluated everything and this is why i think funded is great because it really teaches you to have a hard set of rules which i didn't have the full set of rules to my previous trading plan because my previous trading plan was like one or two trades a day i look for a pattern a set up for a continuation eat my bread at london or new york and then just done and sometimes even though I've done a 10% drawdown, I carry on trading and I know sooner or later my equity curve will go up. But with funded, you cannot do that. So, you know, I sat down, I was like, I reviewed, I gave a hard, um, hard trading strategy, a hard risk management strategy. And then I did back testing through it. I redid everything like I was completely new, but I was able wow. to do it faster because you're coming from experience. So of this course. is the same thing as, you know, where people say, if I take everything away, you'll be able to get there quicker. And that was absolutely what happened last, you know, last year. So then I did that and then got consistent. And I was like, look, remember when you first started, the biggest lesson you told yourself was the compound effect. Just little, little wins, little, little money compounded over a period of time, you will be able to accumulate wealth. You are very fortunate in a position to make sure that, you know, you've been educated and you applied the knowledge and all the other businesses are to pay. Just get small withdrawals, Dan. So that's exactly what I was doing. I was like, okay, cool, 100K. All I care about is just get 2K because when I was funded, I was like, let's try and get this 10K withdrawal. This guy's doing 40K. You've got this leaderboard, which is. You see, right. You see the leaderboard. Face. I'm just going to say, you got the Twitter people like showing their payout receipt. Right. Yeah, You're like, yeah. all right, I got to go make a hundred grand right now. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and the thing is, I know I can do it, but then so what? And it's you versus you, me versus me. And look great. If you've done 40K in your payout, good for you. Like, honestly, I'm not being sarcastic. Not good for you. But I do not want to let that deteriorate me and whilst we're on that because 
Austin is such a transparent guy as well. The, and and this is a great like I know the viewers will will be really beneficial from this is when you look at Instagram and Twitter and all of that. Remember, fifty to even eighty percent of those people flexing their MT four is all fake you cannot fake payouts from multiple prop firms you could fake one prop firm because you probably make the certificate or whatever i don't know what you do but apparently you can do that but if someone has been paid by ftmo who are a pinnacle who would not go for scams or fraud because they will lose their license and their check and you can go for them mff surge the funded trader my funded fx if you if someone's got paid from all of these then they're real you can't argue with that but if someone's just got their own broker on the offshore and then they're suddenly 1k to 50k oh god bro just just bro, don't do it just don't side, do it <laughs> sidebar for a second did you do you know who coffeezilla is yes he loves to call people out and i yes. love i don't watch enough of his stuff because he was going off the the main thing is i'm not a fan of logan paul but he, yeah, was he did the logan paul thing yeah, so yeah, after yeah, logan paul him. he just did traders domain who is red oh flagged by the sec here like there he has the guy that used to call himself uncle ted saying that he would smash coffee zilla's face in and it's now turning into this big battle it's a th three-part series on his youtube channel bro it's insane how much money they roped in from legitimate people like guys that i know are giving testimonials in coffee zilla like one of them his name is pace morby he's a real estate guy he does subject to real estate he Put, I think like a million dollars in traders domain. You know what he said, bro? Crazy. This is, and this, this is, this is, I'm bringing a point to this. This is um, people know they're doing something or being scammed and they don't care. He gave the million as an investment and it showed up instantly in the account on traders domain that day. If you wire a million dollars, do you, it doesn't just show up instantly within an hour. Seven this isn't days, crypto. Five days, yeah. Correct, bro. So in pace said in the interview, he's like, I knew something was up when that happened and I just didn't do anything like that. And that's why people, like you said, will go on Instagram and be fooled. I've had people, this is a short, another short little sidebar. I had a guy join my course, paid in the mentors, but got into the group. He somehow, instead of like, I don't know how to explain this in a way that doesn't sound like rude, but he got scammed by rude. a fake version of me after he had already paid and been in my real discord because he <laughs> didn't do his own research to see he was talking to a fake me on Instagram people don't do enough research and i think they believe they want to believe sorry. in the fantasy i know bro but i know I, I, like i'm sorry but i'm direct and i'm brutal because the thing is Please. i'm not yeah you I'm have not, to be i'm yeah i'm not trying to like be, i'm i'm trying to get, i care about people so the thing yeah. is often times is people like me tell you what you don't want to hear but it's things of course and then they don't so like the us. person yeah for the person who got scammed you deserve to get scammed but i hope you learn that lesson because if you I got scammed you consider, me too in my first start i got Dude, I got, I got scammed money. on crypto so much. <laughs> so, okay, crypto is that. Dude, I had a guy, this is actually worse. He was on Facebook. He was acting like he's a Russian dude. He had a profile picture. I sent him Sounds money so via money already. <laughs> bro, I sent him money via MoneyGram. You think I'm getting that money back, bro? I money ordered Ooh. money to Russia through at a CVS at a pharmacy. Like, like that's how stupid I was because you just don't know. I got I'm into still trading. Stupid. <laughs> I know, same, bro. I just, I know what I know and I know what I don't know. I got into trading because I followed this dude. This is nine years ago. His name was Dino. He was binary options trading from Canada and he had a gold wrapped Lamborghini and it sucked me in, bro. And it's, and it got me into trading. And now here we are eight years later, nine years later. So the scam, well, like I said, it away, I guess, right? Right, right. You do deserve it. But then the guys yeah. that do like the due diligence to persevere. learn from it and not, persevere. yes, you have to persevere a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So that was, a. I, I appreciate you explaining the difference between like your approach a little bit on the, the funded versus the, uh, like the challenge phase. When mm -hmm. you look at these companies now, you mentioned already like increased regulation and, and you mentioned FTMO, they have a license, like you, you mentioned a couple of, of firms. What do you think the future of this looks like? Because you have experience and I want to get into a little bit about what you do at Queen Bureau and what you've learned there, but you have a little, that's like, I would call that a little more institutional, at least compared to like a guy like me that's working from home, just retail trading, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think the future of the prop firm space looks like? Well, it's always a personal opinion and then- uh, Oh, everything's personal but, opinion. That's why yeah, everybody's listening, bro. They want yeah, Dan's personal opinion. That's true. Welcome to the chat. Um, so I, I think the- we're in an infant stage. That's the first thing. And uh, the reason why I say infant stage is because think about it, we've got prop firms popping up left, right, and center. Who's going to last? That's another Who thing. can reword 
my Forex and funds in a different way with another mm -hmm. Forex or fund word in there and start yeah. a firm. That's what's going and on FX right now. FX and prop and yep. all of yep. those words is the same. It's the same thing. And as, as we already, I don't know how many people know or don't know, there's about eight or 10 of them who are still owned by just one person. Yep. Um, so the, the fact is, you just, just broke person. some people's whole day, bro, by saying that, because I've never discussed that on the podcast. So I don't oh, think a lot of people know that. I, I mean, I'm, I don't care. I say whatever. And no, I, I'm glad you brought it up. I'm, I'm, I'm completely open. I'm an open book. So, But that's what people don't um, understand is that these firms can be white labeled out to an influencer and then funneled through an influencer who has just attention, you know, yeah. and they're all the and same back end data. It's all the same back end data. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And you get, and also the risk is separated because then it's a new business. You get different write offs. So you get different um, data points as well. You get different sure. types of money input. And also, sure. if someone's bought from both, um, and also normally sales, how that works is people buy from people, but you know, it, it, it's a completely different thing. Um, but yeah, it's just to talk about that is in, in its infant stage, so it's still very, very early. There's a huge amount of opportunity. So if you're watching this anytime within the next year, we have about five years, I would say, of really, really taking a good amount of money from this. Um, but I think after that, or there's going to be a certain period where, some regulation will come, but the eyes are not on prop firms. The eyes is on crypto. Um, so the eyes being on crypto for the for the time being is just it's gonna take the eyes off of the, the prop firm space. So it's in its infant stage, there's still development, there's still a lot more opportunity, there's still more growth. But if you're smart, and here's a little bit of a tip: if you are actually funded and you have consistent payouts, to be honest. Prop firms are just a stepping stone. You can find investors, private equity, hedge funds, and you can go to institutions. Do you think if you can perform year on year for three years straight and you can make a consistent 10% return per year, not per month, per year, there is not going to be an investor that will be willing to give you 10 million plus. There will be many. 10% a year is, people think 10% a month is a lot, but 10% a year is a lot, honestly, if you understood the world in a bigger picture than the forex guru or traders domain, get off instagram everybody his... that thinks they should make 10 percent a month george soros i watched a video about him from patrick bed david it was a new video he was talking about soros and at the time he was talking about like in the 90s maybe in the 80s soros was one of the top three money managers in the world he was up there with warren buffett and he still is a lot of people consider him one of the best money managers in the world mm -hmm. what was soros's average rate of return 20 30 percent and that's going to be like I think you hit. Right. We're like, talking about a guy that had unlimited access to information, resources out the ass, and he only put 30% a year up. And again, when you're managing more money, someone's going to comment on this, bro. And they're going to say, well, this is why I trade small accounts so I can flip and have a great percent. Right. But what is 100% of $1,000 versus 10% of $10 million? And what's the you risk? See it bigger. Yeah, what's the risk? Like, you're at 100% risk you're versus thinking small. fractions. You're thinking small yeah. and you're not thinking of risk. You're thinking of reward and good traders think of risk, not reward always. And that's just trading. But if you talk about yeah, it as an individual, as a man, as a, as a, as a business person and a businessman, businessmen mm -hmm. make way more than traders. You get to close deals that are like 7 million, 10 million, hundred million with trading. You probably consistently can get like a couple mil. I would think that my, my ceiling for myself, your ceiling is different. So don't take it my ceiling would be anywhere between one and two and i'm happy with that and then i just want to build the rest of my family office trade in other businesses and things like that because then enough. explain to everybody what you're doing we talked about it a little bit because like the goal people are going to hear that and they're going to be like dan why are you settling no he's taking those profits like he just said and reinvesting it into the family office into growing something that's actually going to be a foundation of long-term wealth yeah yeah exactly that so um i, I guess a quick little overview um yeah disclosing some and not disclosing but we will be looking to have bases around the world um so dubai is definitely in the next place we're moving i have citizenship in hong kong and china so we'll probably be well no, not probably we already will be building a base there we have a business there um, my uncle has something which we'll be working with together the uk is pretty set um i've got the real estate business here and two other investments so that's more than enough and then in dubai we'll be moving the trading business we've also got coin bureau and coin bureau trading um and then potentially one more which is in the books at the moment so that will be pretty cool so the reason i've done that um just to kind of give people an idea is rather than just think oh dan's doing this is because as i said this to austin just before the, the 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 podcast is when you have a family and when you have children it's much bigger than you 
you don't really require a lot okay like let's just say you're a typical 18 year old or 20 whatever it is you get a, a lambo it's 100k cool cool story you get like 200k whatever you get a couple of watches you get food once that's all set you've got those assets the spending has so many so many clubs there's only so many foods you can eat there's only so many things you can do by yourself but when you have love from your spouse and you have a child that is going to be a mini you <laughs> it's going to be a it's mini crazy you it's crazy it's crazy so mini you when you, you have the power know. to influence and create that too that's the thing that's motivating that that is absolutely utterly right because not just that though they look up to you they will be the be because our goal i would like to think is the same thing for you is we just want them to be better than us that's that's that's, all, that's the honest truth that's it to be happy to be healthy and to, and to be the best better best version of themselves but that's to it. be better than us not to make the same mistakes and all that things right and yes i come from a humbling background but there is no problem with coming from a good background and that is why i'm trying to set this up so that you know when my son does grow older He's able to understand both sides of the world and then he's able to have that stepping stone so he can go even further than I did to take things happen. And yes, he may not do that, but that's okay. But I'm going to prepare that option for him and I'm pretty confident he's going to do it because you are a product of your environment. If he sees his dad working 24-7, doing the things that he should be doing as a man and as a husband and as a father, then I'm pretty confident I'll be setting an example. I won't be just sitting there telling him, this is what you should be doing. I'll be doing it through action. Okay. Actions speak louder than words. And I had, Absolutely. when I had Riz on the podcast, I said the same thing to him. I was like, bro, guys like you, and, and I, I would pass this to you as well. Guys like yourself, we are the ones who should have the most kids, but it's guys like you and me who are financially stable and doing well that end up sometimes having the least amount of kids. Isn't that interesting? Like statistically, poor people have way more kids than rich people. And it should be the other way because we're the kind of guys that I think can raise good kids. They got nothing to do. That's why they just sit at home. They got nothing to do. They're out. just sitting around humping. Sit bro. The right. In the UK, right. the government pay for them as well. So it's, that's a long, right. so what a do you long expect? story. But then, yeah. like you said, I think being that role model mm. satisfies much more than you. Yeah, it feels it's great to nail. Yeah, you nailed the Bitcoin trade. Great. Like, okay. But a week later when you lose, that win just is like right out. And then it's like, we're, we're back mm. to the, the trading is Another so day. shallow in a way mm. compared to life you know, like actual real life. And I think what you made me think of there, you have so many things that you're juggling. And yet I, you told me today, you were out with your son. You're still able to make time for that. You have all these businesses and trading and you still prioritize that time. Took my wife will tell, it's took, as you should, as you should yeah, start yeah, yeah, young. Yeah, yeah. But my wife will tell people like our friends the other day asked her like, what are you most grateful for? And she quickly will always say the privilege to not have to have to go to work, to raise our family, to be there, to support and take care of. Cause she didn't have that. She comes from a divorced family where both parents are still working. You know, <laughs> we are going to raise it differently. So she and I feel like that is one of our luxuries. Time <laughs> is one of the luxuries that trading has afforded us. Another one, and I'm going to pass this question to you, but another one for me is food. I hate cooking. She's not a big cook. She makes me her smoothie every day, but that's it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. she'll cook sometimes, but we, we eat out a lot. We order good food. I just ordered my meals for the week from this all natural, organic, healthy girl that in my yeah, town yeah. cooks the food. That's a luxury to me. So yeah, to yeah. not have to, you know, so I'm curious, you mentioned that you spend some money on luxury. But you work for what it, do you like? To, you work for it. What but, do you like to spend yeah. your money on? I'm curious other than experiences. Um, Cause I see you traveling and I see you in the gym. So you must be spending money on workout shoes and workout equipment a little bit, right? I'm pretty basic nowadays man like are my, you my yeah like my clothes are from Pro so we've got this place called primark so like it's yeah like of course i know primark bro come on oh. i'm not that not cultured bro come on i don't know did they have primark in america <laughs> of, i don't know of course bro of course occasional yeah, i see the occasional but nowadays who's shopping in stores anyway grandpa come on buy it online and send it back yeah, it's me free and i'm grandpa i'm still, go grandpa. I'm still going I oh we gotta go to the store <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I like to don't go forget try your cane. On, make sure, don't forget your cane sure, as you're walking. Make in. sure I don't fits, want you to fall. Do you know what I mean? Looks I know, like I know. It was funny, tight funny, on that. <laughs> Wait, before we go into that, I just I yeah. do have a question before I forget. How many Please. kids do you want out of interest? As many as I can afford. Okay. As many as I can so afford. So 100, yeah, guys. So watch. Bro, Austin's got a whole football team coming. <laughs> it's, it's funny. My wife will literally say, she goes, if I was a man, I'd spread my seed across the whole farm. That's what she says. <laughs> and because me and her, we watch Andrew Tate stuff. We're like on the same page. My wife and I have a very traditional relationship. Do you know what's funny like, about that? My wife is yeah. a fan of Tate too. Bro, the good girls are because they know that what he's saying is the truth. You know? Because and like they're we real said before, women. That's they're why. They're real women, bro. I, it, real quick, it infuriates me 
as I'm going through, you'll relate to this, I'm sure. I'm going through the birthing classes. I'm seeing her body transform. I'm learning how important, and all of these things are happening in her body. And you want to have men transition to try to take that and be women. You have no idea how beautiful a woman's body is to be a woman and let just leave them alone. Let them be. Honor that. Respect that. Makes no sense. So I want to have as many kids as I can, bro. Because I I feel like you shoot that, Steve, man. You shoot that. Bro, listen, I'll tell you one one of me and my wife, we've been together for four years. We started trying to have a kid month one. Month one, we had the kid. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm I'm starting right here. You know, when I want to have them, we're you got you got shooters, you got swimmers. Mine was good thing I'm not out here blowing blowing, you know, shooting shots at random girls my whole life, or I already have a bunch of kids, bro. And I'd probably not be in financial position because all my trading profits would have gone to child support. Probably you you would never know. So if someone comes true dad dad's here and he's made it so for real, asking bro. for some right, they come out of nowhere. <laughs> but what about you how many kids do you want uh we want to probably go to three so we've got, we've got another one on the way so we've got one already we've got another one on the yeah. way during august um but i don't want any more until i can ha- i can get help uh meaning that in hong kong made is a big thing um but oh, i want to made it. yeah i want a ma- made in dubai but in the uk i do not trust a single soul no. so no. i'm not getting a maid in the, the uk by Dude, far no. so hundred percent. Yeah, I think three, 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 four. three is a good, three or four is a good number for me too. I was being funny about that because, you know, yeah. you still want to fit them all in one car. I'm not trying to buy a school bus, but I said to my wife, I was yeah. like, do you want to get a, a maid? Like, should we get a maid to help with the baby and help? She's like, why? She's like, we have a cleaning lady already. She's like, we need a chef. We don't need a maid. We need a chef. And I was like, oh, that's yeah. true. In America, I'm sure you have this too. We have like all pairs where you can take someone from a different country and bring them over. I don't know if it's I trust them. Dangerous, bro, it's though, so hard nowadays. It's so, so dangerous. Hard to know. They yeah, tell look, people what's happening and then the house gets rid, like gets mugged. They're not here there. at this time in this time. Oh, yeah. the car's gone and the house is broken yeah. into. And I wonder how. And people like, uh, so Chinese people get targeted quite a lot as well because they're known to have that kind of cash, which is one of the reasons why I kind of made my house a little bit more security friendly and made sure that if someone comes in, I'm going to fucking stab them in the neck. Excuse my French. Bro, but... <laughs> I'm surprised that they say that you say that. So in the UK, you feel like Chinese people specifically are targeted because they come, they, people think they come from money. Uh, it's not even, the, I think I know because in meeting Keynes, um, pretty much my circle, every, nearly... 70 percent have been burgled and the bro 70 percent yeah 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 it's messed up and do you know what's messed up about it not one person and also one of them was a manslaughter so one of the aunties uh rest in peace passed away because they pushed and slammed her head and she had internal bleeding and passed so and then yet again they didn't catch them so yet again a failed system and as you as we want to re- reference tate it's a failed society but look it's a failed society on on that note i don't want to be a downer yeah. yes it's a failed society and yes there's lots of different things but you have to it's a good thing because it makes me man up it makes me protect and it makes you think street smart but at the same time uh, is you got to remember if you don't like the system you have a join it and then change it from the inside or you leave that's why a lot of people are leaving to dubai so a BBC you go in Dubai. <laughs> ah, yeah. I love it. Plug, love it. There was a shameless yeah. plug, but yeah, um, I can't yeah, remember no, what your it, question was. Now we were talking no, about no, kids. No, we, were talk- we, we were talking about the kids, but it's it's just it's really um, it's really an interesting time. Like everyone says this, right? It's an interesting time to be alive. We have a lot of things going on in the world, and as yeah. we might say, America has its problems, and the UK has its problems. I'm still grateful to be here. Like you are grateful Absolutely. to be there and have the ability because we could have been born in Sudan. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like we could be pulling a different stick. So we have to take the cards. And you know what, bro? I'm curious, as you make more money and you do better, do you have more of a pull to get out? Like you said, because you're going to Dubai or do you have more, do you have any pull to try to make a change? Or do you feel like, because I feel like it's too far gone. I'm not going to make a change. The smart people are leaving. The money is leaving. I can't, like, even if I want to, how? Like, if I say that, then you just get canceled. Um, You get canceled or you have to align with the beliefs that you really don't feel. You have to sell your soul. Yeah. yeah, and that's why the easiest answer is just to join a system I believe in. I believe in yeah. like a lot of Islam. I believe in a lot of how they run their country in Dubai, and I'm happy with that. The guy safe, with sound. a family from Hong Kong, the Asian from Hong Kong, born in the UK, believes it, that the best place for him right now is potentially Dubai. That's how Absolutely. small the world is now, bro. This is what yeah. our parents' generation does not understand. You have mm. options. You have Mm. and more money more options that's it yeah i'm grateful really really grateful for god really really grateful for life and really grateful that i never gave up 
so it's gratitude to all those people but it's the same to you bro you're doing well and you've got options as well because you know you can go bro. that's what you're we, thinking about it and do whatever I, well, and I, sun we, will push we you did that more. already we we moved from up north as soon as the business started to do well we moved out of the cold and out of the gray weather and we moved down to florida at le- look you could lose 20 grand trading but at least i can go to the beach and go get in the water and see a dolphin yeah, like yeah, yeah, the yeah. day is not that bad when you see that life you know? feels a lot better right that way <laughs> Dude, and, i mean especially with covid and everything we did really well we got down here 2020 bro like april of 2020 nice. as covid was hitting the fan we got out and we were so grateful because it just showed me how important freedom is i started making money i didn't want to pay a lot of taxes and i just wanted to be able to do what i want like i don't need you to tell me what to do i work hard to tell myself what to do you know yeah 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 yeah. and i think that's that's the funny thing it goes back to like when it goes um the worst thing was the best thing look at covid and what that did for you so many people i know who are entrepreneurial did so well in covid so So, so well my second best year ever yeah yeah and my mate my mate turned, he was always uh, doing six, seven figures anyway. And due to COVID, he was able to do nine. So wow. it was insane. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a lot of stories, especially guys like us that are digital. I'm selling stuff online. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a lot of opportunity. But what I remember now what I asked you, we were talking about, because you asked me about how many kids I want to have. And then I was asking you before, what do you like to spend your money on? Because I was saying I spend oh, it on food yeah, yeah. and experiences. So I wanted to know, because I see you in the gym and I see you traveling, but I'm curious. Like, And I, I think you just bought your wife a car or your mom a car. Yeah, you just got yeah. the car. Um, mom's next. Next. Uh, hopefully mom doesn't watch this, but yeah, mom doesn't know, but yeah, mom's next. Um, but we needed a new one for the, f- cause we've got two kids on, obviously right, you're going to need a, on the way. You get a minivan, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. You're going to be whipping a minivan. Yeah. We've got a, a Porsche K and uh, KNS, which is a hybrid. So lovely, lovely car. And I'm lovely obsessed car. with Porsche now. Um, so that's that. Then so yeah, be... high quality, bro. I sat in yeah. the Cayenne. I have a Tesla. I sat in the, 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 what, what's the electric one? The Cay the Cayenne's the truck. What's uh, the Taycan. electric? The Taycan. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's like the Tesla interior is like Burger King. And that is like the nice, that's, that's, you know, Capitol Grill, fine steakhouse. It's just they the drive quality different as well. They drive. Oh my God. Yeah, bro. It's yeah. just unbelievably different. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, it's mainly my wife. My wife spends a lot of my money, if I'm honest. Um, that's good. She, I mean, she, yeah, she, she, we've got shopping. We do a lot of shopping. I do, um, I don't really spend much. Not, not anymore. Like I, I like luxury things like watches. Uh, Louis Vuitton is always going to be my brand and only one. I'm not, I'm not really into anything else. Uh, the reason Why is, is that? Louis Vuitton. Yeah. There's a story with Louis Vuitton is basically when I first started, my mate had an LV wallet and I was like, mate, it's just a wallet. They will do the same thing. They just all hold cash. And then there's a story about it. Started learning it, started liking it. Ironically, I've got one right here. This is a separate is. one, an LV one. And, I just ended up really being attached to it. And then I was like, I can't afford this. And then my first ever paycheck was at LV. And since then, I've just always bought things at LV where it's been a pinnacle. So it's more of an attachment and a... To the meaning. Uh, it's not even the anchor. item. It's the meaning. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the a, meaning. It's an anchor. So like the, ba- like the bags and things like that. And they always remind me, it's like, don't forget, once upon a time, you couldn't even afford the basic wallet. Yeah. Now you're going in there buying hoodies, like uh, bags and clothes and all that stuff. So... Um, yeah, it used to be on that, but I tried to avoid that because really and truly I, I don't really use much of it, but I think traveling is the biggest thing. I don't really like traveling. I can't travel economy or premium economy anymore because my knees really hurt if it's long, long distance. So I really rather pay for a better experience for my family to fly. Like my mum's going to Hong Kong. She's going to Hong Kong for a month, pay for her flight, uh, business as well. Which she preferred and just giving us some how did money she, to spend. How did she handle that? Did she accept that? When I try to do stuff like that for the family that I'm around, they don't they don't accept it. Yeah, she I mean, I was just like, Happy birthday. Here you go. Yeah, <laughs> like like what's there no not to, to like about it. yeah, like yeah, what's yeah. there not to like about it? Do you I know think what I mean? I, my my dad is an attorney and I think he just feels weird because he did well, like he has money, like he doesn't want he's like, I don't need my son to take care of me. I think I could feel that way too, in a way, when I'm his age, you know. So I don't know. I think for 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 us, like how I would want my son to look after me and how I'd spend. So my wife's dad, um, I'm very very blessed as well because I get really well with him. He doesn't need nice. money, but what he does need is a son, and that requires me spending time with him, listening to him moan about stuff. Um, like especially because there's so many women in the family, it's good to just have just boys' time. Do you know what I mean? And then we can go chill, go on holidays together, go on food, and then just pick up the bill. You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily pay for his flights and stuff because he prefers to book it himself and sort himself out. But like when we go out, I'll cover. I like we have this in our culture. I'll always yeah. cover the bill. I'll yeah. always foot the bill where no matter if it's his friends, our friends, whoever it is. But most of my money goes on food nowadays. But 
I would say cars, but because of the the climate of the UK, I might I've got C63s and that got keyed and I got sideswiped and I was supposed to get a Ferrari FF last year and I didn't because bro, thank God you didn't key the they didn't key the Ferrari. Where'd you get yeah. keyed in your town or in London? Were you in London? Uh, no idea. That's another thing. I have no idea. Bro. It's a long day. It's a long day. It's a, it's a long failed day. society. But it's, it, do you know what? Like, like you said, though, I'm super, super grateful and I love it here. And I still would always have a base here and I still would always come back here. And also, I want my son to come here because I think that the rough is good because it will shape him as a man. However, can't be too soft. Definitely. Yeah. However, in Dubai, it just makes a lot more sense because everything's happening. It works for my life. And I don't it's want safer. anyone in. Let's just talk about safe. safety. Well, no one gets. An, even, talking about safety so there's a guy that is a very very big influencer um i won't yeah i won't name him for the time being but basically he's um big influencer and he had his car stolen in dubai now that's one thing to get stolen right if this is the worry but the thing is the police retrieved it at the port in a container so just before it's going to be shipped they actually found it brought it back gave them video updates the whole way, then brought them flowers and a bunch of um, uh, luxury fragrances and moisturizers so they can look after their skin and said, everything's going to be okay. Gave another update in two weeks and then got their car within eight to eight to 12 weeks. That is customer service from the police. Here, Dude. the police were like, mate, your car's gone. Fuck off. <laughs> so this so safety is one thing, but the fact is the police there is like they've got their own customer service. And I that I is am, incredible. That's ins that, it's just the fact that they not only found the car, but they able to like buy you flowers. The chief commissioner officer came over, bought well, they probably oh, don't crazy. have that happen. I thought you were going to say that this is like once a year this happens and it never ha like it's it's probably embarrassing for the police in a way. Yeah, that's pro that, yeah, that's probably why they were like so 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 guilty about it. But it's, and that's the thing, right? Like when you're ran by leaders like that and lead by example, and you know if you steal, you get your hand chopped off. Well, then don't steal. It's simple, you know. Um, it's just it's just, and then like don't rape. Just, don't just don't do anything don't do horrible that. and disgusting it's just so simple why is that such a hard thing to to how why is that a hard thing to instill and why is that a hard thing for the government and the west like america and and, and, and england to punish people who deserve to be punished that's well, what is, is is crazy at the moment i think the short reason is because big pharma has a grasp on everywhere in the world except mm. dubai mm. pharmaceutical drugs have side effects that literally say homicidal tendencies, depression. Mm. These th that, well, we're worried about school shootings here in America. Look at the problem mm. with everybody on drugs. All the school shooters are on drugs. So they don't want to solve these problems. Like you said, they're they're deeply entrenched in the system. They're systemic. So they're very, the it, it's all about money because the money, exactly. It's all Just about like money. tobacco as well, right? Same thing, same thing, exactly. Mm. Yep. Mm. We all know smoking cigarettes is terrible for your body. Mm -hmm. Yet we were and more alcohol. concerned about, and alcohol, but we were more concerned about a virus that killed you know, 0.001% of people. It's money. Yeah, it's just money. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like that's another crazy topic. You're, you're absolutely right with that. As much as like that was a, a pandemic and all that stuff is we are promoting things that can kill you like on purpose. <laughs> but, on purpose, like, alcohol, fast food, <laughs> saturated oil. And then what? Like, you just crazy, said you spend right? a lot of your money on, on food. I spend a lot of money. Why is it expensive to have healthy food? Why is that so much yeah. to ask? A salad at McDonald's is 50% uh, more expensive than the burger. It's crazy to be healthy, right? <laughs> makes it's no tough. sense. It makes no sense. They don't want you to be healthy. That's what I'm saying. It is a systemic problem. Let's, let me back up for a second before I lose. Because I, <laughs> I know, I know we, we, we could go with this is part two. This is part two. I want to hit yeah. you with a couple of trading questions before we wrap up. You told me before we started, you had a good story about biggest win turning into biggest loss. Do you remember the story? Can you share that with us? Because that was like the thing. Everybody, everybody I was online. saying to him, I was like, yeah, no, I don't think it was on. It was right before we started. I said, um, most traders after their biggest win will take their biggest loss. And you said, oh, I have a funny story to tell you about that. Or I have a good story. Do you remember what it was? Biggest win, biggest loss. Wait, oh, I'm trying to remember. All I can think about is COVID right now. Let me biggest, <laughs> You're just thinking about biggest, good thing I'm not. Right. Yeah. Biggest win and biggest losses. Do I have a story about biggest wins and biggest losses? I mean, I think about tilting. That's about Did it. Did one of your biggest, biggest wins win. lead to a big loss? Have you ever had Not that? Really. I've had that, bro. You make ten grand, oh, you get back nine. I do have, I do have, I don't have a story about my biggest win and biggest loss, but okay. I have a story about a hedge fund that taught me um, something, which I was in Mayfair. So, okay, okay. And for everybody that doesn't know, Mayfair is one of the most wealthy areas of London. Yeah, um, 
always in there because I'm poor. <laughs> so <basically, laughs> just hanging around, sure. Yeah, just hanging around. But actually, this is a good this is a good little tip, guys. So we, you know, when you come into a little bit of money, I do think it's important to stay at nice places because you will meet a lot of people. And really, really interesting is when you're there, people will generally smile, nice, and and most people with money just don't want a problem. They we get enough problems with work and all the other things around us. When we're away, we just want to be chilled and right. no problems. So most people are very very friendly, and we we spark up a lot of conversations. And then I ended up sparking a conversation with this guy in in in, in the lift. Um, he had daughter was came through, and I was like, you know, how old? Like really really cute. And and the conversation sparked, and ended up being one of the biggest hedge fund uh, managers. Well, owns actually one of the biggest head funds, but wow. he was managing at that time because he stepped down in Budapest. And he basically taught me a very, very big lesson, which I wish I'd learned earlier. And this is why we're sharing it with you now. He made 10 million uh, in last month. So currently June. So he made 10 million last month. And he was forced to take a two to three week vacation. And they say they do that all the time. So anytime they do any big wings it doesn't have to be significant 10 million is a lot to me and you guys probably but not to him because they do it very very often but the story of this and the most important thing is taking breaks because taking these breaks give you time not to be overconfident not to tilt on your results and this actually was a perfect message from god or perfect message an opportunity from the universe to me because i just had a four week winning streak did over 30 k's i went 20 roughly 20 something in withdrawals it was, it was meant to be bro it was meant to tell you to back up and then i did my last week my son had chicken pox i was my birthday week and i just had so much ongoing i still traded i did it i tilted on one day because i was bored and that's what happens you tilt that's when you're happens. bored of course yeah, all literally of it was just tilted yep. i just did one extra trade which i shouldn't have because i had nothing else to do and it was my birthday right. and was yep. bored shitless so i just yep. clicked the button and lost but i Been reviewed there. it and then i had a five day losing streak and then Ooh. this message came so the losing streak was inevitable and I didn't really mind it either because it's part of my equity curve. But the, the great thing about this was like, I don't take enough breaks from trading. So do take that message and think it's okay to be away from the markets. It's good to actually reset and reflect. And it's also very, very important after a losing period or even a winning period to take some time off because then you come back fresh. It's just like the gym. I'm obviously a big advocate of the gym and we do deload weeks, we do rest weeks, and we'd even do rest days. You are only human and it's important to have that reset period for yourself to level up. So yeah, that's, that's great the main advice. thing. Yeah, yeah. Like main thing I've learned this year and just sharing that story, which I think hopefully can help one or two of your viewers. Yeah. I feel it like over the weekend, bro. Just taking a break over the weekend. I come back on Monday so much fresher than I would if I would go from Friday and then still try to trade Saturday. Because I look at Bitcoin every day. I'm watching crypto every day. So I'm looking at it and I can feel my stress because I've been doing mm. it for long enough. I know when I'm tapped out for the week. I know this yeah. is where your, your brain is not thinking the same way that it should. And that's where you start to have tails, right? 100%. You feel, 100%. Yeah. Yep. And then the, the break is the reset. All right. Yeah. Back to normal. All that extra shit that was building up it's calmed down now let's go back yeah. into it i think people are very greedy though bro they're very greedy so just like in trading there's many paradoxes absolutely right, right. Absolutely so the greed right will keep that. them on the desk the greed will not let yeah. them take the break opportunity cost what if i missed this trade what if this opportunity what i have to do this but you have to say you know the lesson i gave earlier and it's probably been the one i said the most is so what you okay cool take 10 trades you win all 10 then what what is your life going to change no not really so go no, and people have take a it very seriously yeah, yeah people, I know. go have a beer right not yeah. not just have a bounce go have a beer bro go relax it's oh, it's it, it is easy to get wrapped into trading that much though it is i mean i'm definitely a victim of that where it's like it's becomes everything and you can't you're i mean i'm sometimes feel like i'm addicted you know yeah, that's not yeah, healthy yeah. that's not where it's i like want to be with. it's like a, it's like a fix but actually i think yeah. that's a really good point just to kind of touch on like let me yeah, please let me just kind of clarify me and austin yeah. um have been through this as well we're not trying to tell you because we no, did we avoided we it we only anything. speak on it because we've been through it i've over traded i've tilted i've tried to take 10 trades i've tried to flip a thousand everything. into a million i've done everything you can think of the reason why austin is you know so gracefully invited me on and creates all these content is because he's trying to add value to make sure that you guys don't do the same dumb shit that we do and as my uncle always says you are smart if you learn from someone else's mistakes you are normal if you learn from your own but you're stupid if you don't learn from at all so we're trying to make you learn from our mistakes from, from, from doing it i right? love that bro i love that that's a great saying and it's but it's so true but then like um, i was going to ask you 
one of my final questions is always like, what do you see as characteristics that define winning traders? And I would say you would probably say one of them is humble be humble, yeah. be willing to be wrong, right? But then at the same time, don't take it too seriously in a way, right? Yeah, like finding yeah, the balance. Yeah. yeah, I think um every single trader has multiple uh traits because everyone's different. But I think the three main ones that every single profitable traders from retail to professional to institutional to everyone I've met in, in my career is they never give up because they know and understand that they understand themselves because it's you versus you in the market your results actually are just you if you really wanted it enough you'd follow your system it's just it's crazy how simple it is but you just have to know you what causes your tilt what makes you angry what makes you over trade what makes you a revenge trade what makes you frustrated what is the data on that and the third and final bit is they have some sort of peace uh peace in the sense of like do you meditate do you have a religion do you have something to anchor because if you do not reflect you cannot be in a calm state to trade because if you trade with emotions if you often that is the reflection of your results so i say these are the three biggest traits and then it really just dials down back into the individual you know if they're aggressive they can take on risk on risk off really well um and how they market but those three are probably i'd say is that the every pretty much most traders will always have those three i love yeah. it i mean especially the last one because it's probably not brought up enough finding a, some some sense of grounding, some sense of peace outside yeah. of the trading to keep yeah. you focused, to keep you level, you know, from going. Yeah, yeah. And that can be in many forms. That can be, you know, like golf or basketball yep. or gym. Meditation, or, um, like you said, religion. It could be your wife. It could be a lot. It could be a multitude of those things. It's probably yeah, not yeah. just one. Yeah, yeah. You just need to know what that is because then that can bring you back down to earth um when when life is, is, is difficult as such to speak. So, yeah. <laughs> Dan. This has been very, very, it's been fun, bro. It's been amazing. You're, you're a great you guest. You, you speak really well, bro. I, I'm very grateful for you to give us the time. I know the audience is grateful as well. I think we'll put a pin in it for today since I've already stolen over an hour of your time. For everybody listening and watching, please hit us on the comments. Just reach out to either me or Dan on Twitter. I'm going to make sure his Twitter is down below. Hit us on the comments on YouTube or just DM us. Let us know what you want us to talk about in part two, because there's definitely going to be a part two yeah, sometime yeah, later sure. this year. Once my son is born and your next child is born, we'll have to circle up. Maybe we'll make it a little powwow. Everybody bring their kids to the podcast, strap them in in yeah, front yeah, walls. Yeah. So, you know. Got to come to Dubai, man. You got to come to Dubai. Dude, I'll I you, definitely um, will. I think uh, Kyle is, well, I'm seeing Kyle this weekend. So he's going to tell, like, we're going to talk about Dubai a little bit. And he wants to ask me about some, some businesses stuff there. So it'll be good to see him out there. I think Paladin wants to go. So that would be good. Paladin will go to... everywhere, bro. He, he's yeah. so young, bro. He should go everywhere. Yeah, he, he should, should take no every opportunity. Are... No kids, Formula... no girl, bro. Go. Live in the, live in the dream. Formula go, One will be bro. happening as well in November. Oh, so wow. we've got to make sure that all of us are out there at the same time. Because then we, we can have dinner, hit each other up and just be like-minded. So that's really good. Because I have to be in london in december let me know when you're going to be in dubai maybe i can make it work bro go to dubai yeah, first yeah. and then come back in london and work backwards because imagine we get us all together everybody together for a big podcast that's bro, that's break yeah, the that internet stuff bro that breaks the internet right there yeah because riz is um yeah riz will be i think he's based in uk i need to hit him yeah. up he said he, he goes to dubai quite often as well so he goes a lot of them all do. He, he's not probably too far from you i mean he might be i don't know exactly where you're at but he's riz not, is outside so of he's about an hour an hour yeah. and a half yeah yeah message poor guy so bro their know. soccer team is so bad <laughs> are you into football Oh, bro, I'm a big football fan. I'm, I'm, I think it's so funny that Luton is going into the Premier League and that's where Andrew Tate and his brother are from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, wow, times have changed. Luton are coming into the Premier League. I haven't watched football for 10 years because I'm an emotional footballer. I think us Brits, there's something about us in our blood that just makes watching football so frustrating. And yeah, just, just... Who's your team? Last just, question, I, who's your team? I used when to... Um, yeah, I used to massively watch uh, Chelsea. Back then, Chelsea, that was before even Drogba joined. That's how old I am. That was Ian Bro. Phillips. Oh, Bro, man. you're you're old because I always tell people Chelsea was my team. And I was Petr Cech, Drogba, like that was the team, bro. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's um? What was that guy with the? Oh my god, Schlagschnego. Oh, um, Schweinsteiger. Is that who you're talking yes. about? Yes. Yeah, yeah bro. Man, that's how, how long ago it was. Like, I used to watch and then he, he played for Bayern, I think, a little bit after yeah, that, too. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, I know yeah, him yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yep. was sick. Yep. So, yeah, I was sick, massive bro. proud of him. And yeah, that was yeah, when, yeah, yeah. Um, who was the other guy? Ian Robin played for them. 
fast yeah, as balls, yeah, bro. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we're and dating ourselves, bro. Now we're letting Zo- everybody know where was we're Zola? Was that was when I start, yeah. first first started yeah, bro. watching Chelsea? <laughs> That was like 90s. Oh my lord. Bro, that was like, yeah, that was the team before the team that I really paid attention to. Yep. Oh, crazy. God, yeah. No, but listen, Dad, so this has been great, bro. I know, bro. Now we're old. Hey, but you know what? You and me are the only two dads out here. We're traders, we're dads, and we're going anti dad bod, bro. We should both lift up our shirts for the end of the podcast and show everybody yeah, that you don't have to be exactly, a fucking yeah. dad bod, right? No, yeah, bro, it's, yeah, been, yeah. it's been great, Dan. You're, you're awesome, you bro. Me. I'm really. Dude, I'm really glad that we got to connect. I think we get along really well. So I look forward to more of these in the future. And hopefully one day we're shaking hands in person. Yeah, hug for sure. Hugs, I'm a hug hugs. Right just hugs but, though. Nothing more. No poking each other with anything. Remember from the be beginning of the podcast. Something <laughs> <I was> just... <laughs> it is Pride Thank Month, you. bro. So it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Is it okay if you say no homo? That's what we say over here. <laughs> exactly. No, as long as you say that, then it's it's clean. It's all good. It's all good. Cool. Well, no, thank you very much for having me, man. Dude, of course. Everybody, make sure you connect with Dan down below. We appreciate you guys. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, everybody. Peace.